Good evening, everybody. Sound check. This is Paul speaking. Can everybody hear me okay? And you should also have slides up that you can see. A slide, title slide says trade management and using options. Does everybody have that? Good, good, good. All right, let's get going. We're going to go for an hour tonight, 4.30 to 5.30. Uh, trade management and using options. It's going to be a little informal discussion about a few different topics. And there are a few things I promised you that I would go over tonight, so let's take a look. Here's our contact information. If you need anything from the Stock Squish, our website, phone number, you can contact myself or Melissa, Paul, or Melissa at thestockswish.com. Disclosure, as you know, trading can be risky. Promise tonight, some things that I said that in an email that I sent out that I would go over. The number one reason that experienced traders often struggle to profit consistently uh, things you can do the next day after this to improve your trading, the single most important part of a trade that you can control, and proper use and some fallacies of options. All right, I see some people logging in here at the last minute. You guys okay? You guys that sound and everything? I see a bunch of you logging in here right at 4.30. You guys that sound, you should have a chart up in front of you there. All right, great. Who may be interested? Um, this topic, before I even pull up the slides here, this is for... Um, what usually makes up a large group of traders. When you very first start trading, you have to learn what to do. You have to get some education. A lot of people will just get a general technical ed education. Um, people at Stock Squish take a course that teaches about gaps specifically. But regardless, the people I want to talk to are the people that once you have some kind of education and strategy in place, you have to do that first or, or you can't even begin. But once you have that, sometimes people still struggle. Um, yeah, can't send anybody over. Why, where are they? <laughs> Am I in the wrong room or something? Am I in the wrong room or something wrong? Where are they coming from? Yeah, yeah bring them over. Um, the people I'm, I'm talking to are the ones that uh, have come to realize you've been trading for a while, you have the strategy, you know it works, you know you're going to make money. But every trade, you seem to struggle. Every trade, it's like you get a winning trade, you make some money, and you have a losing trade, you have a losing trade, you have a couple of winning trades, but then you don't make much money. Uh, people tend to get in a cycle where you have a couple of losing trades, and then when you have that nice winning trade, instead of carrying it out to get you profitable overall, you sell it very quickly because you say, well, if I sell it now, I'm only down a little bit of money for the week or for the day. And the cycle continues. You lose, take a full loss, and then when you win, you cheat your winner because you want to get back some of the money. And before you know it, pretty soon, you're not actually trading to make money. You're actually trading to lose less money. And that's a very dangerous spot to be in. It's where a lot of people spend a good part of their trading career. So once you understand the strategy and what you're doing, the next thing you have to do is learn this next process. I call it management in general. I call management, though, a very, very big topic. A lot of people refer to management as just what you do on the way to a target, but I consider management to be um, there are ways you can manage an entry different than what you've learned. There are ways you can manage a stop different than what you've learned. There are some of those profitable things you can do. And then, of course, there is how you manage a trade if it's going well or if it's going poorly. And this is where most traders actually lose the greatest part of their money. So if you're good at spotting plays, but you've just been break even for a long, longer than you care to admit, uh, but you're sure next month will be better, this is the person I'm talking to. These are the things I want to go over tonight and things you may be interested in learning more about in the future. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and one of the sayings that I've, I've come around to say, unfortunately, is that um, you, you have to, to study a while and get pretty good to be able to identify charts and be able to tell when a stock's moving and where it's going to move and when it's going to move, and that takes some good skill. But even when you have that skill, I still say those people are a dime a dozen. I know a lot of people that can see chart movement, that can read a chart, but they can't make a penny. What's missing? What's missing are the things I want to talk about tonight. Are any of you in that category, by the way? Any of you in that category? I'm, I'm ex am I talking to you? Good chart reader, you know what's going on. You feel like you got a handle on things. But on the other hand, you just can't pull the profit out at the end of the month, right? You're very confident you're going to get it, but it's been week after week, month after month, and you're starting to say what's going on here, and you start doubting what you're doing, right? This is, I mean, seriously, I, mean, I think some 80% of the people go through 
Um, I, I know of a few handfuls of people, 10% of people that learned a strategy and they just had the natural gut to just go out and trade and just be able to do it. But it's not the norm. The vast majority of people um, struggle because of the emotional things come into play. And it's, it's simply called fear and greed. You hear that a lot, but you may not understand what it really means because fear and greed really is what takes a person who has winning plays even put in front of them and still can't manage to win. It's, it's, it's almost comical, but it's true. And I'm sure some of you have seen that happen. Um, there are literally people you can hand them winning trades. Um, you can hand them three out of four winning trades and they'll lose money on the day. It, it, it is amazing. Is this you? You've noticed that frequently you get out and you see in hindsight you shouldn't be getting in just about at the moment you got out. This is why bottoms form, because a panic happens, the snowball effect, everybody gets out, sellers are all gone, the stock reverses and goes higher. We have to learn how to avoid that. We don't want to be the person who exits a trade at the lowest possible moment before it starts to move in the desired direction. You're tired of those nasty market makers and other people shaking you out of plays to go on and be big winners. Um, at some point, people get frustrated and start blaming everything in the world. You know, they start blaming, uh, I've even heard the market maker conspiracies that market makers are sitting around just waiting to take your bids and offers and run you out of the game. Believe me, that's not true. I, I, I've not been a market maker. I've never worked in the market. I know enough of them, and and they laugh at me when I say that people say that because they're doing all they can to keep their shirt on as well. And yes, there's things that happen in the market, and there are things called HFTs that, that can make things hectic. But nobody's out to get you. Nobody's making you stop out. And if they are, that's part of the game. I mean, it's part of what we do here. You have to learn how to trade around that and not just blame everything that happens and never improve. You have to improve if you want to make money. You start asking yourself when it's going to be time to start focusing on minimizing losers, which is taught to new people, and focus more on maximizing winners. This is a big transition. It's harder for people to make. Um, there is nothing wrong with protecting money, but we do that. How do we protect money? Somebody tell me right now. We come into the marketplace and say, hey, I have to protect your account. We do. How do we do that? How do you protect your account? Somebody, everybody. How do you protect your account? The one word will do it. I'll give you a hint. It's if you're driving, it's red, and it's an octagon shape. If you're trading, it's something that you that you use. What do you, what do, you do when you're trading? You right put in a stop. Right, You have a stop to protect you. Now, you don't have to take another six layers of protection and continue to try and shrink that stop, shrink that stop. I have nothing against minimizing losses if that is the thing that actually maximizes your profits. But most of the time, a lot of the time, minimizing your losses is not the route to maximizing your profits. They're different things. And many new traders get in scared mode and they're always trying to minimize profits. And you know what's going to happen? If you focus on minimizing profits, you know what you're going to do? You're going to have an entire trading career of minimized profit. Of, 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 I'm sorry, I've been saying that backwards for several sentences. Most traders focus too much on minimizing losses instead of maximizing profits. And if you minimize your losses continuously, and that's what you focus on, that's what your career will become, a whole series of minimized lost trades. And that does not make money. So we have to learn to see the difference and be able to analyze our results and understand what we need to do when it's time to minimize losses, when it's time to worry about more about maximizing winners. If you've been trained in technical analysis, there's a good chance you feel you know your strategies and they work, whether they're self-taught or learning a class on the internet. The odds are strong that despite your enthusiasm, you're not making money you want, maybe not doing better than break even, maybe break even and losing on commissions. There's a reason for this, and there's a 90 percent I know it. How do I know it? Well, because I've been there. It was a long time ago for me, but I understand, and I work with people all the time on this, and this is a, a common process people go through. And this is not as you know, glamorizing is learning a strategy. Everybody goes out and learns a strategy, and oh, wow, this is going to be great. And, and it is. You know, a lot of strategies work really well. But like I said, I've seen traders with winning strategies that, that just can't turn a profit because they are not handling the winners right. They're not handling the losers right or a combination of both. When you learn strategies, you take a long time learning whatever the strategy is, correct? You spend a whole day, two days, a whole you know, weekend of tapes, a whole class in person, whatever it is, 
learning a strategy, but then when it comes to learning how to enter that play or how to manage the play, how much time do you spend on it? Generally, almost zero, right? Here's the answer I use, and here's how you manage it. It's usually as an afterthought, and it takes a few minutes, but the truth of it is those entries and the management you're going to use are what's really going to determine your profit. Have some of you come to realize that already? How many of you have realized that already? That it's not just blanketly knowing some strategy. It's really understanding how to apply it, how to get into it, and maybe even beyond what the strategy teaches you as the proper entry. And I don't know really of any class, any course, any strategy that teaches any kind of advanced management at all other than simply, you know, here's the basic thing we're going to do. We're going to trail the play based on blah, blah, blah. And that rarely is good enough to really make you a good trader, to really bring in money. What are some of the entries that you've known? Well, here's why I want to ask you a question here, folks. Um, the presentation that I brought here tonight is like two hours long. It goes through three aspects, entries, management, and, and, and exits. Um, managing the entry, managing the play, managing the stop, actually. Um, which one of those would you guys like to talk about? Take a vote real quick. Would you want, you want me to focus on uh, entries, management, or stops? The management of each one of these to me is critical. I, I, I don't even know which I like the best. I think the management of stops in my career is one of the things that's made the most money for me. Management of entries to me is probably the most important thing. Management of the play in general. Um, it, there's so much to learn about that. Which one do we want to talk about? We'll take a vote. Majority rules. Which one? Everybody type for me. Man, um, entries, play, or stops. Which do you want to talk Management of which? Entries, plays, or stops? Entries, plays, or stops. And we got a few more votes out there. Entries, plays, or stops. What do we want to manage? Entries, plays, or stops. By the way, this, th these topics I can talk about for 8 or 10 hours or 12 hours. That's why I actually have a class about this um, that I'll be teaching tomorrow night. So if this topic really interests you, um, to me, there is nothing more important than really understanding this topic. If you, if you learn it on your own, that's great. It usually takes kind of years to learn it properly. Um, so it's something that I like to teach to people. Um, but tonight I want to give you, you know, I'm going to give you all I can here tonight for some ideas. It looks like, close call here, entries and stops. I'm going to go with the stops, it looks like. All right. I'm going to go with stops here. So when you learn strategies, it takes some time, blah, blah, blah. And then management is mentioned only as an afterthought or maybe not at all. And again, the concept is far below the sophistication that the strategy shows. And you are likely taught to use a stop, a good idea, but I will also bet you that the stop you were taught, the way it was taught, has cost you more money than it has saved you. Um, this is something I would like all of you to do. One of the things I promised you um, that I would do today, let me look at my list here, and let me give them one of them to you right now, because since we're going to go on and talk about management of stops, I want you to, um, number one reason that experienced traders struggle to profit consistently, and it's because of the management of their plays. You probably know that already. Okay, it's because of the management of their plays. Um, taking winning plays and being unable to really um, capture profit at the end of the month because the winners and losers don't balance out. Um, things that you can do the next day to improve your trading. Here is something that will raise your eyebrows like crazy. Um, there is something I, I do with groups of which um, 80 to 90% of the people who do this are in disbelief. And out of those 80 or 90% that are in disbelief, 10% of them have a revelation that they write me a two-page email about. And this is the biggest thing I can give you tonight to open your eyes to help improve your trading. And it takes some work on your part, but People who do this are what I just call shocked and amazed. As a matter of fact, I tell you when you write me an email, the title is shocked and amazed. And here is what I would like you to do. And I've been, again, I've been doing this a long time. I say this just so that you believe carte blanche what I say and don't question it. But if you do this, it's an hour's worth of work, but it will help you more in your trading than anything you will ever do in your career unless you've done this right. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to do a check of your management, okay? It's a very simple concept. 
I want you to go back and take your last 20 trades. Now, this applies particularly well if you're day trading. <clears throat> you can do it if you're swing trading or long-term trading, but it's a little more difficult to do because it takes a long time. But I want you to go look at your last 20 trades. Now, I don't know how frequently each of you trades, but I don't want you to take more than four trades a day if you do do more than that for some reason. So, in other words, I want you to take 20 trades and go back at least five days. And if there are more than four trades a day, take them randomly. I take every second trade or something like that, whatever it is, okay? So you end up with 20 random trades going back over at least five days. Clear, everybody? And then I want you to take those trades, and you're going to have, uh, you know, hopefully you've recorded your, your entry, your exit, and the profit or loss that you made, right? And the grand total profit or loss for those 20 trades. I want you to go back, and I want you to write a new profit number for each one of those trades. And I want that profit number to be what would have happened if you never managed the trade. Now, I'm not saying that you didn't ever stop it out. You still have a stop point. So what I want you to actually to do is I want you to take a, a, to change the stop to be one and a half times what your stop was. So, so I don't confuse you. So if you had a play where you, you entered something, I'm going to type in the screen here, at, at, at 22.20. And it stopped out at $22. Okay. I want you to go back and recalculate all your trades and pretend your stop was $21.90. <clears throat> and then I also want you to, uh, and then I also want you to go and calculate what would have happened if you never managed the trade. In other words, if you just let the trade go to your target, and if you didn't actually have a target written down somewhere, then just take the trade to the end of the day. Okay. So that means that. If the play went down to 22.95, 21.95, and then rallied to a target, instead of a loss on that trade, you would have had a, a win of whatever your target was. If it goes to 21.90, you would have had a loss that'd be one and a half times your normal loss. Okay, so I want you to expand your stop 50%, and then I want you to not manage and simply see what your profit would have been at the end of the day or at the target you picked ahead of time if you picked a target. And I want you to do that for each of the 20 trades. It'll take you about an hour to do that. And then I want you to recalculate your new profit. Is that clear, everybody? I know it's a little confusing, so let me know if you have any questions. We're talking about taking your last 20 trades, <coughs> excuse me, re recalculating your profit by saying, I never managed, I'm not going to manage the trade at all. I'm only going to exit if it goes 50% past my stop, and I'm going to exit at the end of the day or at my targets and recalculate your, your profit. Um, 80% of you are going to be blown away by what you're going to discover when you do that. And you may be saying right now, no, no, that doesn't include me. Just do it, and, and you will be amazed for the most part. What a lot of people find is that they spend a lot of time worried about management, and they manage to their detriment. They take a lot of time managing, but they don't have a system to manage by. They don't have a process by which to manage. They just stare at the screen. Give me a, a show of – give me a yes or a no. Uh, Give me a, a, a true or false or a yes or no. When I get in a trade, I continue to stare at the chart and exit whenever I feel it's appropriate. True or false? When I get in a trade, I stare at the chart, and I, my management consists of exiting whenever I feel it's appropriate. The opposite would be to say, well, I don't even watch a trade. I walk away and just leave it set. Or it would be I have a very preset management style. Uh, which follows very specific rules that I follow. See, most people, virtually you know, 80, 90% of the people, even of experienced traders, really don't have any kind of real management plan when you get down to it. They'll say they do in their head somewhere, but the problem is in the heat of the moment, guess what? You don't follow it. You don't do it. You, you just get out at the first little sign of weakness because you're afraid it's going to turn into a loss. You take lots of little profits. <coughs> Excuse me which are wiped out by one normal size loss. Excuse me. So this is, turns out to be one of the most important things. I, I, I want to go, I'm going to go into and talk about management of stops as the, as the three things rather than the other two. But one of the things I promised I would answer for you tonight is the single most important part of a trade that you can control. And I want to go into that just real quickly. That part of the trade Oh, I want to do this slide too also. This is a generic slide about things. I don't know if some of you have studied, you know, the, the concept of the four levels of learning. I'm not going to, you know, take a lot of time going through this, but it applies tremendously well to trading. The, the highest level of learning over here is unconscious, 
competence way on the right. And I have LeBron James there, a little picture of him. Unconscious competence. That's when you are a master of what you do and you don't even have to think about it. It just becomes second nature in sports. It becomes physically ingrained in your body and your nervous system. And, and, uh, a mental game, you don't even have to, to think about what you're doing. You just do it out of habit. Conscious competence means you're an expert at what you do, but you have to focus and think continuously to keep yourself in track with what you do. Conscious incompetence is when you're not good at what you do yet, but you know what you have to do. You know the goal, you know the flaws, you know the problems. The worst spot to be in is unconscious incompetence, and that's when you're not good at what you're doing, and you don't even know what it is that you don't know. A lot of people that hop from trading room to trading room, webinar to webinar, they're in this stage here where they probably know they don't know what, what to do yet, but they don't really understand the body that there is to learn out there, the information that there is to learn that would change your lives. When people at least discover that and they say, hey, you know, there is really a lot to learn, and they begin to learn it, that's when they become consciously incompetent. That's the first step to becoming a, becoming a trader. You can't become consciously competent until you're consciously incompetent. Um, so this is the learning process that traders spend most of their time, be going from conscious incompetence to conscious competence. This is the learning process, trial and error, getting better. Conscious competence, you can live in all your life. Really good traders can become unconsciously competent. That's, that's the goal. But the problem is a lot of people are in this here, where even the things I'm talking about tonight, they don't even realize or understand what a tremendous wealth of knowledge there is out there to, to have to know and understand to continue to proceed to become a profitable trader because it goes beyond just knowing a strategy. I think most of you know that or you wouldn't be sitting here listening to me right now, correct? All right. Um, I want to, so this, these are some of the things you're trying to avoid. I'm, I'm not going to go through this one here. This has to do with trade management in general, but we all know, you know, we get in plays and it seems like <clears throat> we get into play and it stops out when it stops out almost immediately, correct? When you're in a play that doesn't work, it's like almost immediately, bam, 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 boom, stops out. And you're done. Not all the time, but most of the time. And that's something that is very important to understand, the reason why that happens and how you can go to avoid it. But again, this is not the part I'm going to focus on tonight because, like I said, this I brought two hours of material and I have an hour, so I'm just going to go right to... I want to stop on one slide about entries. The entry is everything is one of the things that I say. <clears throat> Here's what I want to get across to you on entries. Do I have this slide in here about this? Yeah, this is what happened to me recently. I want you to look at this slide. And this is something that maybe happens to you. This happened to me exactly as I did it. I screwed up a trade a while ago. <clears throat> And I want to share it with you because it's unbelievable how the snowball effect happens. Okay, here's here's a play. And don't worry about my strategy why I'm getting in. Here's where I should have gotten it, right there. You see that line, everybody? That's where I should have gotten in the trade. Excuse me, I don't know why I have a drive through. Okay. So I missed the right entry. And you know what I said? I said what a, you know, a lot of people do, including myself sometimes. You know what? I know this trade is going to go a lot higher. I'll just get in late. Okay, so I got in there. See that second line, everybody? That's where I got in. So that first line, can you guys see these lines okay? I, 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 I don't see my arrow showing up, so you got to look at this. First lower line is where I should have gotten in according to my strategy. The second line is where I actually got in just thinking, ah, eh, okay. Now, here's where things really start to fall apart, Okay. If I would have gotten in in my first entry, I would have sold half the trade at that first line up there because that was a two risk reward profit already. Okay? Yeah, there's yeah, there'll be a recording if you uh, it'll be out on YouTube. Um, so I should have sold. I could if I would have gotten properly, I would have sold half, and then once I sell half, I could care less about the back half because you know I'm already profitable. So I would have let this go, and it would have gone on to be a huge back half winner. So I would have had a first half target at two hours, a second half target at five hours, great trade. But here's what actually happened to me. And see if you can follow this thinking. I get in really late. I didn't sell anything, and now I'm back, and I go negative on the trade. You see I'm below, that, below where I got in, right? 
And I'm approaching a stop and I'm thinking, wow, this really is botched up. And sure enough, I don't like to get out of these, but it did something where it kind of bounced. It came back and I set my stop and it took me out. And I stopped out for a half of a loss because I hadn't sold anything yet. So the late entry is not just a matter that you think, well, you see, my thinking was stupidly, even though it was recently, you still think this way during the day sometimes. Well, who cares if it's late entry? I know this thing is going to go really far and it's still going to be a good trade. But then what happens to you is all of a sudden you go negative. And instead of doing half at a profit, then having the guts to hang on to the second half through that pullback and getting a great trade out of it, the entire trade goes down the toilet just because the entry was off. Does that make sense, everyone? And does this, does this, do you see this happening to you? Do you see the concept I'm talking about? You have to have an exact plan of what you do. You have to follow it. And as soon as you get off that plan, it's not like, oh, I'm in 10 cents late. The whole trade is botched and it affects your thinking and what you do. So the, the, to me, the most important part of a trade is, is getting great entries. And I'm not talking about any of the entries that you would use in your normal strategies. I'm talking about advanced entries that can help keep you out of trades. That is the number one goal of a trade, of an entry. Main purpose of a great entry is to keep you out of a losing trade. That's the number one job of a great entry. Most people don't even realize that or understand that. And if you can understand entries better, they can help get you in the place sooner that you should be in, keep you out of the place you shouldn't be in. Naturally, not all the time, but a great part of the time that can help you greatly to increase your profitability. But again, we're not, you guys voted, we're going to talk about management of stops, not of entries so much. Um, this, this though, this answers the last question that I promised you tonight. Most important part of a trade that you can control. Now, a lot of people argue that the exit in general is the most important thing. They're all important parts, but the thing is, I never know where an exit's going to be, to be honest with you. I mean, targets are very, I've been trading all this time, I still can't tell you where a target is exactly. I tell people you have to, to be profitable, you have to know the right zip code for your target. You have to know, is this thing moving 20 cents or $2, so you know what area to zoom in on as the area to focus on for your profits, but you're never going to get targets great. I mean, they're important, but you're never going to get them right. Entries can be made almost perfect if you know how to do them. And that's why I think entry is the, really the most important of the trade that you can control, because you can control the entry 100%. Okay, so let's talk about stops for a minute. <clears throat> um, all the stuff I self-taught myself, none of the stuff you hear from me you'll hear anywhere else. This is all out of my head. I've been teaching it for years and years and years. You may hear other people duplicating in other places, but this is nothing I read or regurgitated. As a matter of fact, when I was trading, this stuff wasn't around. There was very little education on trading. This is stuff that I just created. A lot, a lot of it I created because I did a lot of record keeping. And I went back and I constantly was looking to say, how can I improve this? How can I improve this? And you have to be careful because you don't base everything on how to improve one trade, okay? Any one trade is going to fall through the cracks. You have to look at the majority of trades you think on average. If I change this management style, if I change this entry point, on all of these trades, will it be more profitable over the course of 20, 30, 40 trades, not over any one trade? Um, and the same thing is true with management of stops. When I found out how to effectively manage stops, it was the single greatest thing that helped my profitability more than anything else. <clears throat> so food for thought, what is the purpose of a stop? How much money is saved using tight stops? Does the tight stop save you money even on that single trade? Go back over your trades, do some analysis. You have to use a stop. You've been on trading when that day comes. I, I just, let me see where I'm going here, and then I'm going to come back. Da, 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 da. Okay. okay. So here are some of the bullet points on stops. Excuse me. Purpose of a stop. The purpose of a stop is to keep your account intact. Okay. It is so that you do not have a loss on any trade or any day that makes it difficult to come back for the day or difficult to come back for the week. Okay. I think some people are so have this idea of stops so burnt into their head when they start trading and they're so afraid of the concept that they start to think that, well, if I was supposed to lose more than three hundred dollars and I lost three hundred and fifty, I'm a bad trader. And that's not really the purpose of stops at all. <clears throat> Using tight stops is a fallacy. I mean, if you're gonna risk a certain amount per trade, 
it doesn't matter if your stop is tight or not. If you're risking 300 bucks, a losing trade is 300 bucks. A tight stop does nothing more than make you stop out more often. So you have to be very careful about that. <clears throat> and if you're using a tight stop and then not sure sizing it so that it is the same size risk about as every other trade, then that winning trade is going to be less also, and that really doesn't make sense. Then you're varying your share size based on random events, not on uh, uh, the trading strategy you're doing. Um, now, I want to be, be careful. It is critical you do use a stop on every trade. However, management of stops is something that I've done. And again, this class that I teach, we go over this for several hours. I mean, literally about two and a half hours we talk about this topic because it's huge. But I want to give you a taste of what it's about. There are more intelligent ways to use stops than most people are taught. This, unfortunately, is what happens to most people. If this is what you're doing, you're very likely losing money every day, right? You have some kind of setup come along. I don't care what it is, whatever it is, but you, you decide you have an entry point. You get in the trade, and it stops you out, <clears throat> right? You get out of the trade at a full loss, and you look back at the trade 20 minutes later or half a day later, and boom, you, you not only came back, it's at your target, and you got out exactly at the low of the day, right? Is this, is this happening to you guys? I, I mean, everything happens once. But does this happen to you more than occasionally, everybody? Is this something that happens to you? Where not just that you stop out, anybody stops out, but you stop out and then you find you, it comes back to be a great trade. See, what happens to a lot of people is I can honestly make the statement that for most people, most of the time on any given day, if you would just stop using stops, you'd actually make more money on any single day that you picked. Now, I'm not saying you should do that because what will happen is you'll have a disaster day where you lose more than anything else you made. But if you looked at, looked at one average day and you look at your record, if you're a reasonably good trader, meaning if you can find plays, if you have winning plays, the odds are <clears throat> that your continuous, you know, trying to manage things, get things tight, this continuous hit of stop after stop after stop is costing you more money than if you would manage the stop properly and let some of these go on and be bigger winners. This kills accounts. This concept that I'm protecting my account, yes, you're you're managing, you know, you're trying to minimize those losses or follow a consistent loss pattern, but continuously losing doesn't make money for the account. Forgive me, I'm getting over a little bit of a cough, and I, <clears throat> I thought it was gone. I still got a little bit now that I'm talking. You can prove it to yourself. Check your right. This is the test I told you to do already, right? Is, is to go through and just see what would have happened if you would have managed things a little bit differently. And one of the secrets I have to tell you to learning to do this properly, if you want to not even bother to take a class or learn any more about management, the secret is very simply is do some great record keeping. Go through and test every theory that you have about entries, management, and stops, and focus on um, the ones that make you the most money. You can do this yourself. That's what I did. Um, if you want to take a shortcut, there's lots of great tips I can give you. I'm going to give you some tonight. And then, like I said, there's a, an eight-hour class that I teach that goes through. It's about seven hours, whatever. Um, here's another one to think about. Of your trades to stop out, when do they stop out? Um, you'll find that most of the time, 80% of the time, your trades stop out very quickly after entry. Like you enter the trade, the next bar or two, it stops out, and then whatever happens, happens. Now, keep in mind, if you, if you don't know a strategy, if you don't know technical analysis, if you're just a bad trader, um, management's not going to help you. No offense, but you, you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. If, if your trades all go the wrong direction immediately and continuously forever, you'll never make money. I'm talking to the people who have a pretty good handle on things, that <clears throat> at the end of the day, look back and they say, you know what? Those trades I took today, the trades I'm going to take, you know, they, they did well. I mean, they moved the right direction. I didn't manage this one right. I didn't get all the money out of that one. But you're the people I'm talking to. You're the ones that have a good feeling for the chart that can generally catch movement, but you're just not making money right now. These tactics are the most important thing that you could ever learn. Um, you can't go broke taking a profit is, to me, the most devastatingly wrong line in trading that I've ever heard said by rookie amateurs, um, and, and while theoretically it's true if you never had a losing trade, uh, you're right, you wouldn't go broke, you'd make money, but everyone is losing trades. You're always going to have losing trades. And the excuse 
that people use all the time to just exit a trade whenever they feel like and say, well, I'm up money. I can't go broke if I take a profit. Well, so you make a little money, you make a little money, and then you lose the next two trades and you're way in the hole again. I'm not advocating that you have to go for big targets. That's not at all my point. My point is that you have to manage the relationship between your targets and your management in a way that's consistent all the time in a way that makes you money. I don't care if you're a scalper going for 10 cents with 10 cent stops or if you're a day trader going for $2 with a, with a 50 cent stop. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that you have to follow a method of management that allows you to get to your targets in a certain percentage of the time. And if you're managing so tight that you're, you're clipping trades out the majority of time when they go on to targets, that also has to change. So this is the analysis you have to do. Um, the saying has probably ended more careers than any other saying in trading. Boom. Um, one common adage that's completely wrong-headed, you can't go broke taking profits. That's precisely how many traders go broke, while amateurs go broke by taking uh, large losses. Professionals go broke by taking small profits. Everyone has their own style. <clears throat> small stops, large losses, these terms are all relative. <clears throat> Whether you hold stocks for 15 seconds or 15 months, there's a balance that occurs that maximizes your trading results, not stopping out too often, but yet getting the meat of the move. Most traders are nowhere near this balance. There's a very obvious reason why. The biggest emotion in the market is fear of being a loser. Uh, this is something, too, that if anything could help you right now, it's understanding why we do what we do sometimes. Um, given the two types of trading styles, where one trader overmanages and gets out very early with minimal loss or minimal profit, and the other trader just hangs on forever, 95% of the traders are the first one. 95% <clears throat> of the people overmanage, overreact, take very small profits because this is where fear comes in. And the fear, we talk about fear and greed in trading. Fear is stronger than greed. The person who hangs on forever is greedy. The person who sells quickly is fearful. What are they fearful of? Well, they're fearful of being a loser because once their trade goes green, <clears throat> they feel like a loser when it goes red and they don't want that to happen. Therefore, they start moving up stops or taking profit very quickly so that they're green and they feel good about themselves. Um, the problem is, though, while you feel good about yourself, it is very likely not generating profit for you because that type of trading style of, of taking small losses and let, letting uh, small, small gains and letting losses go to full amounts is not likely going to generate a strategy that's going to make money for you. It's almost impossible to do that. But you feel good about yourself. Because a lot of the trades, you get out green. And this is something you have to realize and you have to change. Trading is not following your normal set of emotions. And this is why most traders coming to the market, that don't try to learn what to do. 95%, and I believe it's even higher, 95% of the people who come to the market who don't try to learn what to do lose. Because following your emotions, following your natural senses, is almost 100% backwards in trading across the board all the time. So we have to do something different. <clears throat> we have to be different than the average person. Here's a quote from me. I don't care how much you study, how much you pay, or how hard you try. Eventually, your success as a trader will come down to how well you manage, period. Let me read that again. I don't care how much you study, how much you pay, or how hard you try. Eventually, your success as a trader will come down to how well you manage, period. Yet, the average trader doesn't even have this on their agenda as a thing that's important. If a strategy doesn't work, you know what most traders do? They go out to find another strategy. Even if they have to pay for another one or take another class or take another, you know, or spend another weekend studying something. And they keep hopping from strategy to strategy, never understanding that their very first strategy is probably fine. They're just not implementing it correctly or properly. I've never, it's very difficult to find a strategy that really totally encompasses everything about a trade from really the proper entry to really managing properly to really the proper stop. Most strategies are just a general concept of here's how you find movement in a certain direction. And that's great. That's all they have to be. That's all we need if we know how to manage the trade. It takes a while to become a great chart reader, but even at an excellent level, chart readers are a dime a dozen. It's what you do with that knowledge that matters. 
That is what separates the wannabes from the pros. Ask yourself, how many times did you have the right play at the right time and made almost nothing? <clears throat> the thing is, we don't like to admit this because we tend to continue to say, well, I'll fix it tomorrow. You know, I know I did that today. I'll fix it tomorrow. But the problem is it never gets fixed. It never gets fixed. People send me their records. I try and work with people. I see them. And the problems that are there this week stay there next week. Nothing ever changes because people like to just learn a strategy, trade during the day, close up shop at 4 o'clock, come back the next day, <clears throat> and hope that something different is going to happen even though they're doing nothing different. You know, the definition of insanity, right? Do the same thing day after day and expect a different result. It's not going to happen. The definition of trade management, the balance between protecting profits, maximizing targets. Um, I have like five minutes on this topic left, <clears throat> and I, I wanted to – I said we're going to focus on the stop part of it. I wasn't going to go too much into the entries or in the management. Um, on, on the stop part, there are things you can do to what I call manage stops. And – People often take this the wrong way because they think it means not following a stop. And that's not true. If you follow a plan, you're a good trader, and that plan may involve altering a stop for certain reasons at certain times. Now, you don't do it all the time. You only do it on certain setups in certain ways. It has to be limited. <laughs> and sometimes it makes you lose more money. But when I do this, and this is something I track for a long time, whatever money I lose managing a stop, I make back more than triple in gains by managing a stop. Now, if there was anything in the world I told you <clears throat> that you would make triple your money on, you wouldn't even question it, right? You wouldn't even question it. As long as it did not involve the concept of having an unlimited loss, right, as part of the problem. If there was the, if there was the possibility you could have a, you know, a huge loss that really occurs. But that's not the case here. There's never any chance for any kind of an exceptional loss. And yet, any money you spend doing what I teach, you make back three to one. At least I do on my trades. Now, that's going to be different for every trader. It depends on the trades you take and how you and how you enter them, and a whole lot of different things. But generally speaking, again, what I teach for me makes more than triple what I lose in terms of managing the concept of a stop. Now, you have to do it properly. There's a very specific way you do it, a very scientific way you do it. I talk about it for just this part of it. I talk about it for over an hour, you know, or more, and the whole concept we talk for about two and a half hours, but I spend that time because to me, this is probably the single greatest thing that helped me make money way back when, and probably one of the things I would hate to do without. I, I would have a hard time trading if I didn't understand all the stuff about management, stuff that when I talk to other people, they don't even know what I'm talking about. So I'm just trying to say there's a lot of stuff out there to learn on this topic. I think it's the single most important topic in trading. Um, and, you know, you can do what you want with that knowledge. If, if you do nothing more than walk away and say, hey, that makes sense, I'm going to try and figure this out, you know, try and figure it out. Um, if you want to jumpstart and, you know, and come right to learning this, like I said, I, I'll be teaching a class. There's actually tomorrow night. It's been on the schedule for a while, but I'm doing this tonight. And class is tomorrow night. Or not tomorrow night, tomorrow during the day. I'm sorry, tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So if it's something you're interested in, let me know. Um, and then with that, I want to go on to the, the second part of this conversation, which is uh, some basics on options. A lot of people have interested. Let me see if I have anything else here because we're not going to talk about management tonight. If you join late, I have like two hours of material here and I only have an hour. So <clears throat> I had the class pick what we talk about. We talked about management stops a little bit. Um, so if, if you're interested in, in this class that talks about these topics in general, uh, it's tomorrow, Tuesday from 11 to 5. Um, you can email me. There's, um, Melissa is doing a 40% off sale, so this is a rare opportunity to get this class really cheap for 1200 bucks. Uh, it's all day tomorrow. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Obviously, you got to sign up by tomorrow noon or something like that. Um, so with that, let me go on to the, um, the second part of this and talk a little bit about options. Options are something that are interest a lot of people. <clears throat> Melissa, Melissa has a, a gap options letter that goes out and interests a lot of people. She's done very well with her calls. And it's generated a lot of interest in options, and um, the, the two of us also do a class on options. It's going to be a week from now. But I, I want to give you some basic concepts on options and go over a couple things here tonight. Um, 
this is a table of contents for the class. We talk about the basics. We talk about the complicated but made very simple, how to use them, the benefits. Oh, I'm sorry. Ignore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boop, bad slide. <laughs> I copied and pasted from the wrong uh, class. Or ignore that. Um, but the the um, the option material, whenever I teach, there's something that I've, I've come to make my mantra, and that is is this, that if it doesn't make you money, I, I don't want to talk about it. People bring up stuff all the time, and I say, yeah, that's great. If you're sitting around a cocktail party, you want to talk about trading, that's nice to know. But you know what? That's never made me a penny. And if it's never made me a penny, I don't want to talk about it. And that's true with a lot of stuff in options. I hear people teach options. They're going on and on and on forever about all this stuff. And you know what? None of it has to do with making money. So let's get down to making money. And some of the basic things I want you to understand about options and go over some of the fallacies of options. How many types of options are there, everybody? How many types of options are there? <clears throat> it's kind of a trick question. A lot of people get this confused. How many types of options are there? Give me a couple quick answers. There's a bunch of you listening here. Just throw a number out there. How many types of options are there? Right. Everybody's got this, I think. There's, no, there's only, yeah, no, yep, there's only two types of options. There's two. There's puts and there's calls. That's, that's all there are. That's all there are in the whole world, okay? Um, you can buy and sell calls. You can buy and sell puts. And when you put those combinations together at different strike prices, there are a whole myriad of strategies you can use with options. <laughs> there are literally infinite strategies using options. I'm going to say infinite. It's maybe not infinite. But there, there are more strategies than you could list here in a half hour using options. And they're named. They're not named. They have different names. Who cares? I don't care about names. But what options actually really do is that they simply skew the reward to risk on any given trade. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second what I mean by that. But one of the fallacies of options, options are not a strategy. Okay? Options are not a strategy. I hear people say sometimes, well, should I learn how to do this or should I learn options? Well, options are just a different way to skew the risk reward on the underlying thing. Now, there's options on a lot of things, but we'll talk about equity options. If you have a stock like Microsoft, if you're bullish on Microsoft, you could buy Microsoft, the stock, right? And if it goes up, you make money. You also could do various things with options to make money if Microsoft goes up. You could buy out-of-the-money calls on Microsoft. You could buy in-the-money calls on Microsoft. You could sell puts on Microsoft. You could sell in-the-money puts. You could buy a call, sell a put. You could you could uh, buy buy and sell two different calls. You could buy and sell two different puts. There's various things you could do to capture uh, a movement on Microsoft, and each of them would have a totally different reward-to-risk parameter, and that's what options do for you. Um, <clears throat> let me go to the next slide first, and I'll come back to this. A call option is an agreement that gives an investor blah, 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 blah. blah. This is what we're not going to talk about in class. I mean, I, I don't care if you know the definition. Here's what you need to know is, is that if you think a stock's moving up and you want to risk a certain amount of money and you think it's going to move $5, what's the, what's the best option combination you can use to capture that movement? That's what you need to know, right? Not all the blah, blah, blah. Um, here's one of the slides out here. And this is just in the middle of the, of the thing, and I just want to show you how clear and concise we are talking about all this different stuff. But let me give you examples of what I mean about skewing the rewards to risk. One of the things people like to do is to just buy calls on something, okay? <clears throat> If you buy out of the money calls, that means like if Microsoft's at 25 and you buy a $30 call, well, it means that you're betting Microsoft's going to get over $30. And if it does, you could make a lot of money. Um, but if it doesn't, you're going to lose all of your money. But the thing is, the calls you buy are very cheap. It's almost like kind of like buying a bet on something. I'm betting Microsoft's going to get to a certain number. So when you buy calls on something, you're willing to lose your entire investment, but it's a small investment. Maybe you risk $1,500 buying, you know, um, 10, 10, 15 cent calls on Microsoft, you know, whatever it is. Um, so you have a limited risk and you can never lose more than that amount. That's something that may interest people, right? And there's times you may want to do that. There's other ways that you can use options. Um, you could um, use options, for example, if you think Microsoft's moving up, but you're not sure how far. Now, let's say Microsoft's at $26. <coughs> Excuse me. 
you could sell $25 puts on Microsoft. And when you sell a put, the money is immediately put in your account. Say you make 800 bucks, you put it in your account. Boom, it sits there. And you get to keep that money if Microsoft moves up like you think it would. You get to keep that money if Microsoft goes nowhere. You get to keep that money if Microsoft falls, but doesn't fall more than a dollar. If it falls more than a dollar, you lose some of the $800 for every penny it falls. You lose another 10 cents a profit or dollar profit. But the point is that these are all the different combinations you can use to try and capture money with options. That's what they do. Um, they are not a separate strategy. And there is no such thing as an option strategy that does not rely somewhat on understanding and knowing where the underlying price is moving. In other words, there are many option strategies that try to take the underlying stock out of the equation. They're called delta neutral theories and things like that that <clears throat> try to minimize how much you care about where the stock is moving. But the truth of it is, if you know where the stock is moving, it's always going to maximize your ability to use options. Now, if you're playing the stock, you have to know where the stock's moving, right? No question about it. If you use options, sometimes you care a little less about where it's moving, but you always need to know where it's moving to maximize your profit. So we have to still be chart readers. We still have to know where the stocks are going. But then options give us an opportunity to severely alter the reward to risk that we would normally not have any choice of in a stock. If you're taking a stock... <coughs> You know, boom, you're trying to get it to move a certain amount while risking a certain amount. Those are all random numbers. With options, you really lock in those numbers, and you can hold them to a very, very um, fixed parameters in terms of what you're risking and what you're going to make. There are, when you're selling calls or puts, it can be very, very high batting average. You can be right <clears throat> a lot, but you're actually willing to lose sometimes three or four times the amount of money that you make when you win. But you're right 90% of the time, or you should be right 90% of the time. If you're buying calls, <clears throat> out-of-the-money calls, it's a very simple thing to do, but it's also the greatest losing strategy if you do not have special knowledge about where the stock's going. Now, this is what Melissa does. She's very good at knowing when the stock's going to move based on what it does after it gaps. And she's done very well with her calls. But for the average person to just buy a call out of the money, it is the single greatest losing investment. 95% of all call options expire worthless, which means that if you bought it, you, you lost all your money. Um, I was talking to somebody today in the room who was asking me about a play on a stock that already moved a lot. I said, I still think it's higher, but it had a big part of the move. And the question was, well, how, how do the options look on it? Well, you don't want to take out options on something that's going to move up slowly. If you take out a call option on something that you think is going to move higher, it may move higher and you may still lose all your money. And that's something people don't fully understand. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do in this class is spend, uh, I'm just, Melissa takes day two where she takes practical applications options and what she does with them. <clears throat> I on day one, I'm gonna run through everything from the basics right through the most advanced strategies there are, even iron condors and everything else, they're all fancy names. Once you understand how these things work, but not really that tough to figure out. So here's, a, here's an example from the slide here that talks about um, the difference between buying and selling. A lot of people don't even know you can sell calls as well as buy calls. So just in this example, just to give you an example of what we're going to be talking about. Price of stock is $31.50. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the strike price is $35. Time to expiration is 10 days. Price option is $2. If you bought this call, it would cost you $2,000. <clears> If the stock moves from 31 to 35, you lose all your money. Even though you want the stock to move up, it can move up four bucks, you lose all your money. If it closes at 37, you make money. Max loss is $2,000. Uh, max profit is infinite. And as it moves above 37, you start making money very quickly, very quickly. Like at 39, you'd be doubling your money, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is an out of the money call if it has a very low batting average and a high reward to risk. If you sold this call, 10 contracts, you get paid $2,000. If the stock closes at 35 or lower, you keep all the money. If the stock closes at 37 above, you lose money. Max profit is $2,000. Max loss is infinite. And there's a way to protect that so it's not infinite. This is an out-of-the-money call, typically a high batting average, a lower reward to risk. So these are the type of things we're going through. And obviously, I jumped into this in the middle of the slide. I just want to show you the detail and the depth we're talking about on all these and this is actually a fairly 
simple slide. It just talks about buying and selling calls, which is more toward the beginning of the class. But when we start from step one, we're going to run through and go through everything there is to know about the various combinations of calls and puts, everything about you know synthetic purchase of stock and all those good little terms, and go through and really understand all there is about buying and selling calls and puts. Those four, you know, those two things, calls and puts. You can buy and sell either one. Those combinations can come together to form a really wide variety of strategies. Here are some of the strategies. <clears throat> Selling covered calls or puts, synthetic stock purchase sale, buy short stock, having it put to you, buying deep, buying selling deep in the money options, buying calls and puts at the money, in the money, out of the money, selling calls and puts at the money, in the money, out of the money, selling spread, buying spreads, butterfly, calendar spreads, diagonal spreads, condor spreads. I'm sorry, <clears throat> I coughed there and I, my mic never came back on, excuse me. Yeah, I know you got me now. So, <laughs> um, where did it, uh, I, you probably didn't hear this slide. I was, so I was just saying that buying and selling calls and puts, two things, calls and puts, buying and selling, can come together to make a, a whole myriad of different strategies. And these are the strategies we'll be talking about that day. Um, selling covered calls and puts, Synthetic stock purchase or sales, buying and shorting stocks having it by having it put to you. Interesting long-term strategy to actually, instead of paying for a stock, to actually be paid to buy it at a cheaper price. How does that sound? Somebody pays you to buy the stock you're going to buy anyhow. That's something you can do for longer-term players. Um, buying calls and puts at the money, in the money, out of the money. Selling calls and puts at the money, in the money, out of the money. Selling spread, buying spreads, and then butterfly, calendar spreads, diagonal spreads, condors, um, and there's a host of other terms too. But once you get the hang of it, you'll understand all these different parameters. So those are the strategies we'll be talking about in um, when we talk about using options. So I want to give you some of the knowledge tonight, and then uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'll be going through on day one, going through the basics of advanced. Melissa on day two will be talking about um, her application of this for a couple of hours to what she does with her uh, her gap calls. And this is also part of the 40% off sale, and that's going to be next Monday and Tuesday. Okay. So uh, I was just saying that if you have, we're right at the end of the time here. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, gladly take any questions you have. I can hang around a couple of minutes if you want to. Um, otherwise, I hope I got across the four things I promised I would tonight. Number one reason that experienced traders struggle, uh, things you can do tomorrow to improve your trading, the single most important part of trading you can control, and their proper use of fallacies of options. Hopefully I got across some basic information. Hopefully you can take some of that to help your trading tomorrow if that's all you want to do. If some of you are interested in taking advanced um, management class tomorrow, uh, let me know um, today or tomorrow because the class starts tomorrow at 11. So obviously you got to sign up for sometime early tomorrow morning. Okay. Any questions, anybody? Anything you want to talk about at all? I can hang around a few minutes if you have anything you want to go over. Questions on anything? Feel free. You guys are kind of a, a bunch of you here, but you're kind of a quiet group. We had a few questions as we went through it, but don't be afraid. Any questions, anybody? Okay. you guys enjoy hopefully you enjoyed the presentation to some extent worth your time here worth your time worth the hour this afternoon all right great yeah the um yeah there'll be a recording um you can get it on youtube or email me if you don't see it out there okay my let me give you my my email is up there my email was up there
you have a couple questions coming. I will hang on a minute here. <clears throat> yeah, recording on YouTube, right? Yep. But what was the single most important thing about me? Uh, what I talked about, if you missed it, was the concept of <clears throat> well, managing the trade, managing the entry, managing the stop are all important. I feel in a lot of ways that managing the entry is the most important thing because missing the entry often has a snowball effect. And I went through a trade where um, that happened to me. It can happen very often where you miss the right entry. It affects your decision to where to get out. It affects your decision how to manage. And pretty soon, it, we, what was for me, uh, the best trade of the month, I actually took a half loss on. So I, I feel that you have great control over your entry, and if you lose that control, it can really botch up your trade more than anything else. All right? That's the last question. Looks like All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, see you guys maybe with some, some of you in class tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Otherwise, we'll see you at the next event or in the room if you're in the room. Okay, so take care, guys. Have a good evening.